How high can the markets continue to push as we are knocking on the door of extreme greed? As a famous investor once said that it is time to be fearful when people are greedy and time to be greedy when people are fearful. And if that investor was none other than Warren Buffett. As he sells more Bank of America stock, he's officially under the 10% margin. We'll be discussing why that's important along with what levels we need to pay attention to going into Bank of America earnings, going into city earnings, going into all these earnings that are up on deck this week. It's gonna be a fantastic week. We got Netflix on deck along with City Bank of America America, Goldman Sachs, all the banks united, US Bank Corp. It's going to be a fantastic week. We're also going to be talking about the strategies to profit off of these levels in this video. And it's only going to take me about 15 minutes to give you all this information. So instead of you guys scrolling on social media, you guys can stay to, for that 15 minutes that could possibly change your week, possibly set you on a trajectory for profit this week. And it's going to be a fantastic time. And if it don't work out, then guess what? It's only 15 minutes of your time. You can do a lot more stuff during the week. And again, with Netflix coming up, expected to be a banger earnings, 29 to two downside. We're gonna be going over the options play for Netflix that I'd be looking at. Obviously, I'm gonna be looking at a debit spread to the upside for that. If you don't know what that is, I have also linked in the description below couple option videos that you can go to understand how options are basically introductory course for that. So make sure you guys check it out. And while you're down there, check out the discord where you can get interact with us. It's completely free to interact with us. We give you all this knowledge and also keep you guys updated of some of the trades that are going on watch lists as well in there. So you can know, Hey, what are things I need to be looking at? What are things I need to be uh, not necessarily looking at? And it's the quickest way to get trading advice from us, just kind of bouncing ideas off other members in the group and it's completely free. So, make sure you guys join that before that thing actually goes up and we put it behind the paywall. So you wanna be one of the first hundred in there as well. Again, the week is turning out to be a very interesting week, especially with Fed expectations not moving a single inch. We did have a lot of Fed speakers on deck and this subsequent week is not really a big mover week, right? We got the uh, basically Federal Reserve budget. We got Tuesday um, daily speaking, a bunch of Fed members. I'm not really expecting to see much from them. Imports, exports on Wednesday, Friday, uh, sorry, Thursday is we got some Fed Valley manufacturing index, but it's not really gonna move the markets the same way that it has traditionally moved them. We also on Friday are gonna get some housing data, which again, we've gone over in this channel. There's not a lot of evidence of a housing crash or even a lot of people on YouTube throwing out housing crash, housing crash, because it's clickbait, right? Let's just just talk about it. I do foresee some things going on in the housing market. I'm starting to see degradation in it. However, until this chart actually makes a lower low, which is the Redfin Home Index, it's not really going to change much, right? Median home price across America, 432,000. This thing subsequently five years ago, right? If we go to it, was sitting roughly at 300,000, nearly a 20, 30% gain over the last five years. That's insane. And until you get a housing crash that results in a reduction, a deflationary environment, well, you're not going to have a deleveraging. Now, the question is, do we need to be looking for deleveraging our portfolios as Warren Buffett is deleveraging his, right? He's selling Bank of America. He sold a lot of Apple. And I've been saying for multiple weeks now that he's setting up to sell Bank of America into strength on earnings, even though Bank of America actually is expected to have horrible earnings. We saw the same thing with the analysts on the flip side of last quarter, where we covered all the earnings plays which was that you're not really looking super uh, bullish, right? On the actual reaction, but everyone's saying bullish, right? Now it's the flip side. They're all saying bearish and the reaction is bullish. If we look at JP Morgan real quick, we can clearly see that they had a banger day for earnings, right? Blowing through that expected move, gamma squeezing it to the upside. Say a Bank of America sympathy play with that as well, right? As those other banks had a massive sympathy play. Wells Fargo as well, $60.99. So that was an, a huge unexpected move in those stocks. And I do believe the momentum is going to be bullishness for the rest of these bank earnings, seeing how everyone reacted to these. Now we'll be going over how we would play those earnings in the later part of the video, and then subsequently giving you some option plays out there. But you guys all come here to know what the S&P did. Well, first of all, weekly higher high in the S&P. That's clear as simple as we've closed at a new all-time high. The one thing that was concerning this week that I'll go over in the next section of the video is that the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ, didn't necessarily make a new weekly higher high on a closing basis. It made two 
attempts at closing above that and then failed to. However, we closed within striking distance of that weekly high. So therefore, we natural question is, are we going to continue to break it? How's the range setting up for the week? Again, contracted range, so it's much, much easier to predict. And let's dive into those levels with S&P first. So looking at S&P, you pretty much have a very easy play for this week. And it's as simple as this. If we look at where the VIX is, right, uh, which is around the 20s, right, and we'll go into VIX in just a second, but VIX is in the 20s, that means that implied volatility has not really shrunk, right? VIX has just been going sideways as the market has been going up. This benefits us from uh, in the sense of selling puts because you're going to take advantage of two things. You're going to take advantage of that theta decay where the implied volatility is going to contract. And also you're going to be selling continuously as we break to weekly higher highs. You should have been selling this last week. But then again, we can take advantage of that again as we break the 579.58 level, which is where we need to be looking for that break. Once we break above it, we start selling puts R around the 20 delta puts. I like to do 20 and five. It's shown and I've shown in this video that's linked in the description below how that can profit about more five to six percent more than the standard S&P returns for that year stretch over 10 years tasty trade also does an excellent back test system so if you guys want to check them out link in the description below and we have bullish momentum right so let's see bullish momentum fear and greed uh extremely greedy territory not a lot of threats in the sense of the broader economy right there may be economical threats and there may be middle eastern tensions but the market's really been like meh the world again i've shown the mean on before that uh the iran is threatening world war three and the vix is at 20 it's like what you doing right but simply put it uh, 58033 new all-time high break above it blue sky breakout continue to sell puts until we get a rotation below 574.38 that is where we would be closing our positions for loss or profit regardless right because you may have a profit even if that moves against you and then subsequently looking to break 572.46 why is 542.76 important well simply put it opens the door for this price action right here to come into fruition if that price action doesn't come into fruition then we don't look to the bearish side right everyone can throw every single bearish theory right i've covered it multiple times where i've said inverted yield curve is going to be the grim reaper of us all but simply put there's no evidence right now for the s p going lower we continue to make weekly higher highs the nasdaq is setting up to be a beautiful breakout with continuation especially with netflix earnings on deck everyone's expected to play bullish on netflix earnings so the queues are definitely going to be another point that we could front run load up on those bullish positions head into netflix earnings and that'd be an amazing buying opportunity the same way that rotationary 572 point was for the s p it could also be a buying opportunity similarly 488.41 on the nasdaq this level could be a touch point for us to then rotate up to a higher break right if people want to just pull back a little bit kind of buy that bottom dip push up above 494.47 and subsequently again selling puts selling puts selling puts I, I can't stress enough I don't want to be debit side of the transaction because the VIX when it contracts is going to not yield as much profit on top of you're going to be paying a higher premium for it versus if VIX is at 15 16 17 12 right the market is still pricing in some volatility which is good for us especially if we get these larger breaks that means the moves are more exaggerated you can maximize your profit right get to that 50 percent profit at the key level which is how we play options we usually when we're selling options we take 50 percent of the profit close the transaction or roll it right there's two ways to manage that but i describe all that in the video down below so simply put 494.47 break similarly to the s p we buy uh, we sell puts we keep going up and then we look for netflix right netflix is going to be the big kahuna on deck it's expected right now to have a massive breakout again we're just continuously bopping ourselves into these higher high right here and we can see that we're just in a ascending wedge essentially but in a good way right this could break out and it could be massive for netflix we're pushing pretty much to blue sky breakout territory and subsequently it leads me to believe okay Netflix at a higher high, blue sky breakout territory. This basically is setting up four massive uh, 29 to two gains, right? And the question is, where am I gonna find the bearishness in the market to say, hey, we need to be bearish. Now, let's look at Bank of America and Netflix option plays, as I promised you guys in the beginning of the video, and then we'll get to the biggest winners and losers followed up by the debate. So what number do you think psychologically when I tell you 700, 800, right? The numbers that come to mind are 725, 750. 
That's what we want to set up uh, basically for our Netflix position. We want to be looking bearish, uh, sorry, bullish on the spreads, right? So we want to be around that 750 number as our selling option, right? So then we want to see, okay, 750, let's say buy the 740, right? Nice $10 spread on Netflix, especially being a bigger cap stock. You're looking at $627 profit versus $373 loss, right? I like that spread. I like the 745, 750. 750 is just a psychological number, right? 10% move on Netflix would be 800. So meeting halfway, we maximize basically our potential, but we don't want to make the spread too small, especially with a bigger cap stock. You want to be playing these larger spreads because this is going to, you're going to take advantage of it. You could also stretch the risk, right? You could go 755. Now, 750 I pick because it's a psychological number. I definitely want to anchor it around that 750 number, but I do want to leave the door open for more opportunity, right? And we can clearly see uh, maybe not putting as much capital, maybe 245 capital versus 500 in profit, the 750, 740, 250, right? Just trimming that a bit. Play around with these numbers, guys, when you're presenting up an option play. You wanna be targeting around the 40 delta as your short, or sorry, buy opportunity, selling around the 0.35 um, delta, or 0.37 in this case. But again, playing around that psychological number because in order to profit from this transaction, you have to be above 750. If we get a bullish reaction out of Netflix and we see bullish continuation out of the banks, then this play pretty much comes very, very easily. Now, let's say Netflix is at 750. Well, then we could be looking at the 800 next stop, 775, right? These common numbers that we hear that are psychologically appealing to the mind and they're easily for people to understand. So that's, that's why I wanna stress Pick numbers that are round numbers. That's why Bitcoin went to hit 7250. It's just a psychological number that it just kept banging its head around. These nice round numbers, 68,000, 65,000, right? These nice numbers that basically psychologically people don't really associate necessarily as being like the target, but psychologically they sound nice to us and that's triggers human emotion. Again, the stock market is a gigantic play of human emotion. So let's also go to Bank of America, right? Because we wanna also give you that play as promised. Bank of America, again, same bullish expectation, um, looking at roughly $43, right? This is gonna be a tighter transaction because we wanna basically keep it in a little smaller range. 13 versus 37 you could play. This is gonna be one of those plays that you guys could do that have smaller accounts, right? So you could do the $22 to make $77. Again, we wanna see how far we can stretch. Again, the, these options are gonna contract, so the pricing for uh, Bank of America is gonna be a little bit different. But then again, you can you can see how far you wanna take the leverage, right? So if you want more certainty, you could go slower. You could be coming basically a dollar outside the standard that it is now, uh, or a $2 move, right? So if you go do a $2 move, you're looking at 17 versus 32, but the transaction size is a little bit better in your favor, $23 versus 77. That's pretty decent uh, ratio. So we can basically set up 44 to 43, $2, sorry, $1 with, again, $2 outside what the current trading range is. A little bit outside the expected move, but if we have a banger move with all these things with uh, Netflix, that continuation is definitely going to drop, right? You're expecting a larger return from that. And this is one of those cheaper option plays. You could also sell uh, the calls, the put side as well, right? You could sell the $40.50 uh, put to basically profit. However, it's gonna require $4,000 in collateral because if it executes, you're gonna to have to buy the stock. Now, that's not saying that it's not a profitable option, but personally, I'd be looking to sell or play that bullish side just because there's not a lot of risk out there. Again, for us buying the $43 strike, selling the 44, that's what $23 risk for $77 profit, especially with this move and the implied volatility being in a decent area for both of these stocks, definitely would be looking for them. And as promised guys, 15 minutes, I gave you the levels that you need to pension to the week. We also gave you the bank earnings and along with Netflix earnings, and you can replicate the same strategy for any of these bigger cap stocks, smaller cap stocks, right? So your US Bank, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Citibank, you can do the same thing. And just to prove it, we're gonna do Citibank as a free one for you guys. 
uh, out there so we can see same, same thing you go you look okay 31 that's where i want to buy sell a dollar or two above and that's going to be 43 dollars for 107 right so you can look at different stocks to play around with all expected to be bullish continuations don't necessarily believe the bank earn, uh, the bank analysis earnings because they're sending up a very bearish narrative which shows right it's like a 25 percent chance that that hits so kind of it pays to be a little bit contrarian and you guys will see that in the next section of the video where we're going to be discussing all the news and politics how we're seeing the world evolving what we're excited for so make sure you guys stay tuned to the very end for that and let's dive into the debate now so are is there any earnings that you're particularly excited for well i mean it's the start of the earnings season and uh, we got united health which you know that's my baby oh, yeah. uh by the way i did say right when when that <laughs> thing fell sub 500 it was what 480 something 447 I think... I think it was a 52 week low a lot of people were like oh no they got problems they got problems i'm like it's a great company you may want to buy and right now i think it's upwards of like what like near 600 if i'm yeah, not mistaken UNH. I'm trying to pull it up here while uh, UNH, when it fell, I was one of those people that was nihilistic about it. I was like, uh, it fell. Fundamentals. To, yeah. The fundamentals fell, do not lie. Yeah. It fell. It fell to a low of 435, right? That, that was the go. low that, that we're talking about right here. And then I was like, I think it, it broke the 200. I'm like, I don't like it. I think it's going to go to 385. I think Ghost was also saying the same thing. And then we all ate turd the next day when it had a 10% gap up. I was just like... Thank you, UNH, for making me eat my own words literally in 24 hours. Fundamentals do not lie. What can I yeah. say? Yeah, and now you're at uh, five, you're, you're knocking on the door of 600. You've kind of been pounding your head against that for quite some time. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely an interesting one to behold with that. Yeah. And especially... Yeah. Uh, for the earn earnings, right? Um, we got Netflix on deck this week. They're expecting uh, a beats like usual with Netflix, right? Tw uh, uh, 20, 29 to 29 to two, wow. right? So massive, massive odds on that, which naturally brings the question of like how we saw with JP Morgan, they were expecting one way and it went the other. Is Netflix right. gonna follow that or is it just gonna be bullish sentiment um, like you mentioned before? Well, I mean, speaking of JP Morgan, that was a major surprise. I mean, they beat by like, what, $1.27 billion on revenue? Yeah, they so did that some... in itself was really surprising. And we kind of mentioned it on the Tuesday stream when we're, or sorry, when we were streaming about CPI and all that, that I was expect. I'm like, how much bad news can you pump into the markets before the markets are basically like, we really don't... Uh, we, we really don't, uh, don't care for the bad news, right? Where we're looking at... JP Morgan's like they were expecting massive margin decreases and subsequently it was like just, you know, um, just banger, right? Banger, same, same with Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo also had a massive move, right? Nice 5% uh, day uh, gap up, really didn't sell off even. So just continuation of strength. So I expect Bank of America, like I mentioned, there, I'm definitely gonna be pulling bullish for it, especially when the analysts are basically saying that we're expecting 11 to the downside. Whereas I'm like, you guys were saying the exact same thing about JP Morgan Wells Fargo and you were wrong. So let's play the contrarian view this time. That's Bank of America, 11. So 12 total, 11 to the downside. Yeah. That even, is even though kind of crazy. Revenue is not really going to even decrease much, right? Like you're, you're playing that skim margin like we saw with Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo was like, you're expecting Wells Fargo was the exact same thing. Remember, it was like two to like 11 and we were looking at it and basically it was like 25 to 23. So but I was just thinking I just had an idea or not an idea, but, but a thought uh, I, I can already see the headlines. If Bank of America crushes it, skyrockets. They're going to be like, Warren Buffett was wrong. Remember? <laughs> I, I heard, no, no. Line. And he's probably, right, you know, Warren Buffett, I mentioned in the beginning of the video, selling Bank of America is a warning, right? The, 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 this, this sums it up in the best possible light. Because, like you said, the articles are going to write themselves. They're basically mm -hmm. going to come out and they're going to say that Buffett's wrong, all this. Again. Yep. Met Kathy Wood said the exact same thing, and look what happened to her, right? You know, mm -hmm. arc 2,000% up and 99% down. It's just fantastic yep. story. 
But yep. Buffett, I'm like, he hopes that everyone's going to be buying the frenzy because that means he can unload faster and quicker than anyone else, right? He can sell into that strength, that traditional bullish mentality, that traditional whale mentality of selling into strength. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how uh, the news actually reacts to Buffett. If assuming, right? Because like it could go both ways. It, it'll be like it'll be like. Uh, the stock goes up, Buffett was wrong, Buffett sells, and then he was wrong. Or if the stock falls, it'd be like, Buffett was right. So it'll, it'll just... Or they'll blame Buffett. Be surpri- or they'll right. blame him. The stock goes down, it's like, this is Warren Buffett's fault for selling. Right. He's not showing faith in the company that he stood behind, right? Like, just all this jargon that's just going to yeah. push. But got to love it. And also in other news, right? Uh, North Korea wants to join in the party of uh, orders fully armed units near South Korean border. You know, Kim Jong-il was like, everyone's going to war. I want to go to war. So It's sounding a lot like uh, when Russia was putting in troops on the Ukrainian border. Remember that? Yeah, they're like, well, he's looking at politics, right? And he's saying, well, the I'm, I'm not, if Orange Man gets in, I'm not gonna be able to do this. So I need to do this now, right? Everyone's like looking at the election and basically being like, um, the it's over, right? And also, I know me and you've discussed this multiple times and like you we were like, wait till the ultimate indicator has finally sounded for the election. It's over, the results are already in. Would you like to know what that indicator is? What? Jim Cramer predicts Kamala Harris will win the presidential election. Sir, you are completely wrong. Uh, there is no, no no way. Yeah, I don't see how he, Trump, wins, right? So, you know, the, the man, the myth, the legend has spoken. The election's over. All right. Yeah, there you um, go. He eats turd. He, like, I, I woke up today. I saw this article. I jumped out of bed to make this video today. Wow, dude. That is, that is actually pretty funny. Yep, that when, is actually pretty when funny. you have a 99% track record of being wrong, it's like, damn, this just, the, the polling was already going horrible, and then this is the cherry on top. But we'll, again, we'll be covering the election live on November 5th, right afterwards, late live stream, so make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for that. But again, this week's going to be pretty boring, right? There, We had the big kahuna week this last week. Um, one of the things I didn't mention is the net speculative positions continue to be uh, bullish, both the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, S&P actually flipped a little negative, but again, not really seeing like this rally mentality necessarily holding up, but it definitely could continue, especially with the bullishness of Bank of America, City, Wells Fargo. Again, we got a huge slew of earnings this week. Now we're gonna be streaming, what, Tuesday, Thursday, definitely for Netflix. I don't know, what what's your thoughts on Wednesday stream? Uh, let's see. So what do we have for Wednesday? What well, you we got have... uh, Alcoa, Bancorp, Morgan yeah. Stanley, Kinder Morgan. The only, one there, the only one there would just be Abbott. Abbott and, and Discover, honestly. Okay. Um, Discover. Oh, yeah. we've Well, what the acquisition is going to be interesting, right? Because Capital One and Discover are merging. So we're going to get an update on that. And true. then uh, what else did you say? Abbott? Abbott? Abbott Laboratories, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, that really is it. the only ones I really care about for Wednesday. But are we going to stream on Tuesday? Yeah, you got to. It's okay. bank earnings. Okay. Tuesday, okay. Thursday. Those the two big Kahuna days this week. Uh, next right. week's obviously going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because it's going to be Apple, Microsoft, all the big ones, right? So tech week. Uh, is that next week? I think that's the following week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's actually. I'm go pretty to, sure it's the following week. Let's go to. It always skips a week. It's bank earnings, then it skips a week, then it's then it's the. Um, uh, let's see. Let's go to my good friend, Mr. Apple. Mr. Mr. Apple's Apple. earnings, yeah, that's all the way out in last week. Amazon is Thursday the 24th, so yeah, right. Amazon's next oh. week. No, no, what are 20- you talking about, dude? No, no, week after, sorry, week. A week after, that, that's what I'm saying, it's like, it's like next week there's nothing, or, or sorry, no, no, this week. 24th. This week, uh, Netflix, Amazon's when does next week. Microsoft, when does Microsoft? The uh, last week of October, so two weeks okay. from now. A week from now is when you get Amazon, you get Tesla, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So Amazon Tesla week is uh, Wednesday. Amazon's Thursday. Uh, Goog is going to be next week, Tuesday. Woo. Goog moving up wow. in the world. So not this coming okay. week, guys. The following week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, most likely for the streams for that one, just because you're going to have some of the bigger cap stocks, right? Meta. No, Meta's going to be on the Apple week. So it's going to be heading into the election week. We're going to have... 
um, these earnings come up, then we're gonna have the election, and then we're gonna have Powell afterwards. So it's just gonna be a grandiose and literally election. Powell afterwards. And the funny thing the is the election, because their meeting's the fifth, after this week is their blackout period. So end of this week starts their blackout period where they're not allowed to speak to any of the media on any topic, right? And wow. I, so it's gonna be very interesting how this friend over here is gonna turn out because it said uh, your loop-de-loops have been denied. Uh, please reinsert payment information here. So, so we are getting into a massive volatile uh, period then. Like these next couple, these next three weeks, if I'm not mistaken, are going to be absolutely catastrophic when it comes to vo volatility. Yeah. And you know what? The one stable thing, and we'll conclude on this, is what? the CME tool is not moving in any way, shape, or form. They are hell bent on this 25 basis point cut especially with the inflation numbers they're like it like the inflation numbers jog the 50 out of their mind but they're still in this cut mentality i'm like you guys do realize the way the polling's going you're gonna get a hike not a cut we'll see we shall see what happens oh. with that and uh lastly uh fear and greed where are we at well come on knocking on the doorstep of extreme greed we have been at extreme greed the most amount of time this year than any other year. I would year, say the last mistaken. two years, it's just the scale is only this side, right? It's not, it's, it's not even like you don't even have that side of the scale. You just have this side of the scale. It right. like cranks to neutral and then slaps right back to extreme greed. Cranks to neutral. Cranks to neutral. Cranks to neutral. Maybe into fear, but then it just swings back like yeah, instantly. Yeah. Like it's like a rubber about, band. Like, two weeks. Pulling the yeah. rubber band and then like when you get into fear, it just snaps right back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. guys, that will conclude today. Make sure you guys uh, watch the option video that we got queued up on the left over here. Also linked in the description. Make sure you guys join the Discord where we're going to be coming out with different things in there. And also, this is how you get notified the best. Make sure you guys are subscribed for the live stream. It's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern as always. And have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I hope to see you guys in the next one.